Welcome back to the FU Money Podcast. FU today, Dane. FU today too, Hugh. Okay. So we went and had an epic event at the 18 Alpha Ski Retreat. Shout out to it Dane was and so Rocky good. There. Yeah, awesome uh, event. We talked money and all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll we'll be bringing some of that there. But before, when we left off, we said, "Hey, where do we even get started?" And if you haven't listened to that episode, I'd go back and listen to that one because it really sets the foundation. And today we're going to get into a little bit more strategy, right? This is for the set it and forget it. If you start here, you're going to be successful, right? If you're an 18 year old who knows nothing about money and you take this advice, you're going to be super successful. If you're 35 and you have all this debt and you're married, you know, over time, you're going to become more and more successful. So Dane, you want to give, give us a quick recap over the previous episode though, just like highlights. Yeah, it's interesting because we thought the first episode was going to be about this and and all things like budget and how to put systems together. And we really got into the, hey, what do you want to make money for? Like, what is your value system? How do you track what you're already spending? And we made some really simple steps on how to do that before we get into the actual systems of money and and budgeting being one of the primary tools. So, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about tools that we use today. We talked a little bit about them previously, just from USAA, the bank that Dane has. But your banks probably have some tools. Right now, we're not sponsored by any tools, so I don't. So we're we're, we're gonna we're just gonna kind of share with you what what is available today. There was a juggernaut that if you've listened to any money podcast for the last ten years, maybe more, they all talk about Mint. Mint is dying in, I think, like 30 days or something. So we were, we we're going to be saying, hey, where to go after Mint? Well, first of all, why use Mint at all? And then where to go from there? So awesome. before we get into budgeting, I mean, where should we start, Dan? Oh, man, I love budgeting. It's like my favorite topic. <laughs> Said no one ever. And, and realistically, it's identifying the need, okay? I lived for a very long time without realizing the need for a budget. And sometimes that's because you have disposable income. Sometimes it's because you're poor at managing money. Sometimes it's because you really don't know what tools are available. So I think one, you need to identify what is a budget for? And Hugh, you probably could answer that better than me because you've used one for a lot longer than I have. So I want to say, I don't have a budget. So I don't have a, I mean, I kind of have a budget, but I know if I had a budget that I had to follow, I wouldn't follow it because I'm, I'm lazy and I'm scatterbrained and ridiculous. So I'm going to say, not a controversial thing, but I set my systems up to protect me from me. And I think the average person needs that, right? Just, and I call it stealing from myself before I blow it because I'm an idiot, right? And I'll steal it from myself to a good place, you know, right now than in the future, right? And, yeah, and so there's, yeah. there's ways to kind of expand on that. But on that uh, idea, but, you still needed fundamentals of where you're stealing it from yourself to put it, which is kind of like a budget. It is still a financial plan or system. And so right. kind of tell the audience what you mean by that a little bit, because it is different. And I use an actual budget. Yeah. So I think back in college or whatever, probably after college, I was just doing stuff because they said that you're supposed to. And, and, and you're supposed to have a budget, so follow it. So I created this budget, you know, I was an Excel spreadsheet guy, you know, I, I don't know if mint existed back then, maybe it did, but it was new ish at the time. And I basically realized I was never going to follow it. Wasn't following it. Hadn't even looked at it and like months would go by and I'd be like, crap, I got to go fill out my budget. And it was just a nightmare. And so before I would suggest this as step one, right? Well, sorry, step zero is understand your values, right? Step one is track. Forget a budget. Don't worry about a budget. If you haven't done this step, just track everything that you spend, right? Mindy Jensen talks about she uses a, a pen or, or, or early on in the 90s, right? In the olden times. Good she old would use a pen. She'd use a pen and a notepad and she would just write it down. I think she kept it in her purse or something like that. It's called a ledger. Um, Came with a checkbook. Well, I don't think I know how to do that, right? Right. Actually, when I get a checkbook, I just rip off that part and throw it in the trash. Most people do. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's, that's wild. But just start tracking everything. So now there's all kinds of softwares. Dane got into a little bit of that last episode with USA. Can you just tell me your, your kind of tool that you have? Yeah. So it was kind of interesting. I never noticed it before, but it said, hey, here's kind of your financial outlook. And it already had everything in a pie chart, my spending habits. And I was like, 
that's kind of cool. Come to find out, you're like, whoa, I'm spending $2,000 on food every month is like me and Kim at the time. And that that's, you know, when the light bulb went off. OK, we should probably start tracking our expenses. And luckily, it was built into a banking system that I was already using. But what about all the expenses that I wasn't using through USA? Regular credit cards, cash money, checks, that kind of thing. So there's problems and limits to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a very good chance right now, if you've never done this before, that you can log in, just pull out your phone or whatever, log into your bank app, no matter where you're at in the world, right? Probably that your bank probably has an app. And then that bank probably has some kind of automated budgeting, like, hey, here's your spending, right? And it's not always going to be correct, right? And there's going to be like Amazon purchases. And we yeah. have a place called, we eat a lot of Chinese food. It's called Cashew In, Cashew Out. And it always it, it always gets flagged as a hotel stay because it has the word in. So <laughs> it's a little clunky, right? Yeah. But the long and short of it is there's that. So I'm going to talk about a few tools pre-budget, right? It's funny because now we're getting more into budgeting and we're still not talking about it. You don't even know what's what before like like you can have a pie in the sky idea and just write stuff on a stream it's not gonna be as useful as being like what am i actually spending money on all right so historically it would have been mint what is recommended it was free i'm gonna recommend two today not because i'm sponsored by them but it's one is gonna be empower and there's i don't know links to the description whatever wherever this is found but empower basically you sync all the things, as Dane was saying, his USAA stuff logged his USAA stuff. But if he's got a credit card, if he's got, you know, he's buying stocks and bonds or something, and he's buying stuff in cash, or he has another bank account, none of that's being tracked. So, so there are a lot right. of free services that are aggregators that can bring all of that into one spot. And you just log into it, and then you log into your different accounts because Empower, I, I've heard of that one. What was the other one that you were going to recommend? The other one is called Monarch. And I heard mm -hmm. it's the closest to Mint. I have not personally used it, so I'm not going to give it an endorsement. However, from all of the people that are big money nerds who really track it, they like it. I think it's, ex I'm not going to say it's expensive, but it, it is $15 a month for that service. I don't know what comes with it. Better um, be good. But yeah, so I mean, that might be something that's worth it. It may not be. So, yeah, I mean, my Netflix subscription is 15 bucks, but it entertains me. So hopefully Monarch's got it pretty dialed in. No, I mean, honestly, though, you're right. You want something to bring your whole financial picture together because sure, USA tracked all of those expenses for me and gave me this nice little financial picture. But I have, you know, 20 accounts of different things that is not being tracked through that system. So that really limited us and, and which is why that tool could only take me so far. And that's where against like all of the resistance that I had, I finally adopted a budget. Yeah, right. So step one, here's the easiest way to get a budget is track everything, right? Bind everything together. If you've got like you, you do like two or three credit cards and this and that, and you bind them all together. Some of them just start you at the day you sign up and you move forward. But a lot of this data is historical. So you can actually go back in time. It'll automatically go back in time for you and say, oh, you know, two months ago, you had this dollars in your bank account. And now you have these dollars in your bank account, right? Your expenses were this much and your expenses are now that much. And it's just very different. But starting there, when you can see a whole picture of everything you spend, right? If you have a spouse, right? Everything you guys spend together, just pencil that out and just kind of look at what your numbers are and see if that's reasonable or see if you're even aware of the spending. Yeah. You make a good point with partner or spouse. That's where, you know, my wife and I really got held up because for the longest time she had money going into her Navy fed. She was Navy. You know, I was a different branch when I got USA. So our money flowed into two different accounts, which left either of us with zero visibility. Then we would combine X amount finally, like it took us years to do that, which just made it a nightmare. The lack of visibility and, and quantifiability in what you're spending and how you're spending really turned us upside down more than we had realized because we just couldn't see it. And then by the time we could, we were like, that's bad. We shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And you bring up a really good point and foreshadowing. 
in the future, I don't know when, but in the future, we will have an episode over how to split or how many people split couples finances, the pros and cons of each one. There are, there is no right answer. There are definitely wrong answers, but there is no right answer. It's kind of going to be different for everybody. Yeah, um, that's going to be a good episode, actually. So, okay. So step one, just track everything. Use a tool. I use Empower right now. It's a little annoying because I have one bank. It's the local bank that I use. They're awesome. Old Missouri Bank. Shout out to them. Their bank does not sync with Empower. So I have to manually log in and update the accounts. <laughs> and I just do it once a month. More like once every six months. Like I, I, I really blatantly ignore it. But Empower is designed to give you an overall net worth, right? If you got student loans, it has your student loans in there. If you have cars, you have your car loans in there. If you have houses, it has your house loans in there. It yeah. also has the value of your houses, and it has the value of stock portfolios, and it has the value inside of your uh, bank account. So if you can log into all of your things, and it has all your credit card debt, right? If you log in and it very simply shows you a snapshot of every month where you're at, every day where you're at. Now in power, they used to be called something different. They used to be called personal capital. That's right. Okay. So same company, new name, different new branding, I'm assuming. Okay. So I, I had heard about personal capital. It was great. I used it years and years ago before I ever got married when I had full control over my own expenses, it was awesome. And then I stopped using it for some reason. But anyway, good to know. Empower. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure their, their logo is even the same. It's just, they just updated it to, yeah, Empower instead of Personal Capital. <laughs> okay, um, got it. I, I still use it. I don't want to say barely. I still use it. It's just, I wish it would integrate with, Mint did integrate with my bank. Um, yeah. But Empower does not still. So if uh, Old Missouri Bank uh, IT guys, you guys are listening, we'd love for you to inter interact with some of the uh, larger guys out there for open up your APIs or whatever. Definitely. Well, that's Very awesome. Helpful. Okay. So step one, track, right? If you can get historical data, just go back six months. If you can't get historical data, don't fret. Don't, we, don't freak out. Just wait. Just live your, live your life for like another month or two. And just kind of see, can you go back one month and just see what your expenses are like? Okay. So Dane, you've lived your life. You've seen what your expenses are like. What are our next steps? For me, it was, okay, we are adults now. And my wife was like, we need a budget. And I had mentioned on the other episode, didn't get much into it. I even paid a financial quote unquote coach who was supposed to create this budget for us, walk through the whole thing teach us about how it works, what to track, percentages, all the stuff. Didn't end up working. We used it only during our sessions. My wife hated it. And her system wasn't something that was intuitive enough for us to just log in. We needed to have someone kind of being there to help move things to the next month, track historical, all the, all the stuff. So that just failed miserably for us. And I, I spent money on it. What are some categories that you should have in a budget? Definitely expenses. So, you know, your, your fixed expenses, your fixed income, variable Dang, income. You, you just jump straight to expenses. Wow. Okay. All right. Hey man, I'm getting to the, like, that's, that's the painful stuff. I was like, if I know that, then I can figure out the rest. And then truly like, yeah, you're going to have to categorize all of your spending into all kinds of buckets. And for us, yeah, and we'll get into this later, we were having a hard time finding the right tool. So my wife went on to Etsy and some awesome designer of pretty things and Excel made a really nice budget like sheet that auto calculates everything, does everything for us. But they already had like pre-filled categories. And so we were just like, that makes sense. And then we would start putting our things into that. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to suggest a few things. If you go back to the previous episode, we talked about the values, right? What are your values? What do you want to do with your life? Do you want to travel? Do you love video games, right? Do you love to go shoot? Whatever it is, you're, you, you have values, you have things that you say you want. So Step one, you determine your values. You say, this is what I want my life to look like. I want to go traveling to Europe once a year, right? Then you do the tracking and you say, hey, 
I've just lived like I normally do for three months, right? And you, you just, just track it, right? Then from there, those two things, then see if they align, right? And you can accelerate this process, but over time, right? Don't freak out. Just live your day like normal. Look and see if those two things line up. So that's, that's my step one. When you're looking over your, you're just, when you're just tracking things, you know, you know, I know this is a different episode, but Dane, can you tell us about Andes and Brahms real quick? Yeah. So Kim, you know, ended up moving out here with me to Missouri. She, she joined me and I, I had been here for three months before she got here, maybe two months. And so she was looking over the bank statements and she'd never been out here. She didn't know what Andes or Brahms was, but you know, every charge, every other charge multiple times a day and definitely a more than I should have in a week was Andy's Brahms, Andy's Brahms. And she goes, what in the world are you spending all this money at these two places? And one was the local eating establishment and the other was ice cream. And I'm not a big fat guy, just to be, you know, clear. That's right. For those of you listening in a car right now. No. So, okay. So he just looked at what his spending was, right? So let's say Dane's value was travel. He wants to travel. And he can't find money in his budget. He can't find his money to go traveling. But then here he is, he sees his budget or he sees on his just, just tracking, right? We're not even to budgets yet. We're seeing, hey, I'm spending $800 a month on Andy's frozen custard ice cream. It, does this matter, right? Is, is this something that I consciously am choosing or is it not, right? And so that's, that's step two. Okay, so now step three for the budgeting, what I would suggest. Remember, I, I, I started this by saying I'm lazy and I'm not going to follow a budget. And so what I designed is I designed a way to me not follow a budget and do whatever I want. And it's kind of following pay yourself first. This is my opinion on a good budget, which is not having a budget. And I believe Scott Trench has that as well. And Dane and I, you know, he kind of knows about that. Dane, you want to kind of go into it a little bit? About you not budgeting? Yeah. Like pay yourself first and like how. Yeah. So pay yourself first is, I mean, a lot of financial literature is out there on this concept. So it's nothing new. It's always take the first portion of what you make and pay yourself. And that might differ depending on your income level and where you're at in life. That could be 5%. That could be 10%. Some people can pay themselves 20%. You really have to know, um, you know, again, track your spending and understand your your lifestyle and living expenses. But at the end of the day, you should be paying yourself something, even if, and I think in Profit First, or maybe it was another book I read, they're like, even if it was a dollar a paycheck, mm -hmm. get in the habit of making that a transaction that happens the very moment that money hits your account. That should be the okay. first thing that happens. And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you guys, the, the Dane shared the concept. I'm going to share with you the action now. Really, really simple, straightforward. And in fact, you can even pause this to do it right now. Just, you know, don't be texting and driving or whatever, but it's very simple. Step one, you look at your values and you say what I want. Dane wants to travel. Dane likes to travel. Dane's going to go into USAA and create a new account called travel, right? Then he's going to go to the other one called whatever his, you know, other values are, right? Now, before that, right, I'm just making sure that you guys are aware. The first one should be a savings emergency fund. We'll get into that later. Like what, mm -hmm. what categories you should have. We're not getting to that right now. This is just the how. The how is create an account for the thing you want, then set up an auto draft. This is very important. We just had a conversation this morning with our employees about this. They're like, ah, you know, I've tried this pay yourself thing, uh, pay yourself first thing for the last six months and I've only saved $400. And, and we keep robbing the account. It's because they were manually doing it. They didn't actually commit or they didn't have the steps, right? And so here's the steps. Create the account, auto draft, even $1, right? If you have an emergency savings fund, auto draft $20 from your paycheck on the same day that you get paid, auto draft $20 into your savings account, right? If you have an emergency fund, auto draft $10 into your emergency fund. I, this is straightforward. This is exactly what I did. Word for word, directly, this is how I did it. And because I had that habit is the only reason I was able to build. Now it's 10 years later. 
I only started investing seriously three years ago. And it was only because 10 years before I had the correct habits that allowed me to be successful in the future. Because I was just a normal guy. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. And so if you can just base your habits on that. So Dane, can you give some examples of how maybe now your habits are different or your budgeting? Well, yeah. And I laughed this morning when we had that conversation with the employees because I was like, I can do that on my phone. And so, you know, <laughs> I've already a meeting. Yeah. We paused our meeting because you're like, hey, everyone should do that now. And I was like, I wonder if USA does that. And I got on there and I was like, yeah, I mean, I knew you could transfer balances, but I never clicked the drop down that said reoccurring and the date and all that stuff. And so, you know, truth be told, I actually set my reoccurring automatic profit first account today because <laughs> I've been doing it manually for a long time. And so, you know, I'm like anyone I also can learn something new. And it was so easy. If, if USA does it, I know other banks do it. It really is setting that habit first because as your money comes in, the quicker it goes to somewhere else and somewhere that's not just easy to grab. That was the other thing that was like a real important key. When you take this out of your account and you're paying yourself first, Maybe it's in a different bank. Maybe it's in a different location. It's It's got to be somewhere that you can't just grab on the go. It makes you pause and think, should I really be spending this money? Should I, can I do something else or maybe avoid this thing? Because that's, that you're robbing from yourself and not in the good way. So yeah, but guilty. I, I didn't even have that set up till this morning. Right. Yeah. And uh, that, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. So it was just... Exactly that. What are your values? Maybe it's in a different bank, right? I think the rule of thumb, is ACH transfers are normally like three days. So if you can do it in three days, so it's like, okay, I have my emergency reserve. I have my savings account. It's in bank B, right? If I really am in a pinch, I will reach out to bank B, pull the money over and, and spend it on the thing, right? If you need to. But if you don't need to, then everything stays in there. So you have a general spending account. This is in humans are a creature of habit. You look at your, probably today, the most, most people watching this, maybe, unfortunately, probably only have one account. Some advanced people, probably a very small percentage, have two accounts, their checking account and their savings account. And that's where everyone stops. And they'll look at their savings account and it's pitiful. And it's pitiful because of human habit. Because if you rely on a human to do something, you're not going to do it, which is why I do not use a budget. I have my auto draft, auto draft everything in every other department or whatever, every, every account that I need first. And what's left over is what I spent. It's that simple. Yeah. And that actually is a really good system and method. I happen to be married to an ex military member and officer. So I can rely on her to hold us accountable for things. She's like commander in chief of the finances and household. And so we set weekly money dates and the weekly money dates were to sit down at a cafe somewhere outside of our house or on the back patio somewhere relaxing and we pull it up. But we, we really had to schedule that time together and make it meaningful. And that's how we've been able to, I think, finally get a hold of all of this stuff, which is budgeting and tracking expenses and our value system and all of that fun stuff and see if we're even on track to half of this stuff. So uh, Dan, it's, it's great. You are alluding to even more future combos. We're going to talk about money dates with a spouse or, or friends, right? If you're just like, Hey, let's just go out. I mean, there's some, there's some really fun things out there, but it's so important, right? Usually there's a spender and a saver probably the savers listening to this podcast, they want the spender to maybe be open to the idea. And so we're going to teach you guys how to have that money date and just ideas to have. But yeah, as you're stepping through, you're just thinking, how does this line up? It's going to be different for everybody. So we're going to give a lot of ways to do it. This is even before we get into investing. Actually, it's including investing. So every month, money is automatically taken out of my account. It leaves, it goes to Fidelity, and it buys VTI inside of a fund. So if you don't have any idea what any of that means, don't worry. We're going to get to all of that later. 
But I basically use that as the emergency fund and I'm backing that reasoning with math. A lot of people don't like that. I'm not sure we're going to get comments about it in the email, but I'm going to share with you what I do. You don't have to do that. It's just a way to do it. Yeah, for sure. And and my system's completely different. So what I like is that we're going to give two different perspectives. Neither is right or wrong. It's just what works for our households. Just like all of you who are watching or listening, your household is very unique to you, how you spend, what your values are, um, your needs versus wants. And so money can be very personal. It also can be really painful to talk about for a lot of people, especially if you are someone who's out of control of your spending or saving. And in the United States, it's the no, no, you know one of the number one things people fight about couples is money. And oh, yeah. simultaneously, you know, all wealthy people, Americans have this taboo about talking about money for some reason. And it, it, it may or may not happen in other parts of the world to some degree. But one thing I, I realized when hanging out with millionaires and, you know, really, really good people that are on top of their game, they're hungry people. One thing that I talk about all the time is money. And it's not in a snotty, I have more money than you way like is portrayed by the media or TV, but it's just like money. It's either you're going to control money or money's going to control you. And I heard a great saying last week and it was, it was if, if not having money is like not having water. If you don't have it, that's all you can think about is how do you get more money? And this show hopefully will step you through maybe your, you know, negative $100,000 in debt back to zero and, and advance past that, right? And we're going to do it in a way that's not eating rice and beans, do it in a way that's not depriving you of yourself. Now, you might have to sacrifice, but it's not going to be super, super bad. And so... We're going to give the best, you know, and, and, and we're going to have people on that have even better ideas, right? So Yeah. And, and, you know, real talk with the audience. I've been in that position where money was like water. And when you're out of it, all you can think about is what am I going to do to get more to pay my bills or whatever that is? And yeah, am I going to be eating tuna fish out of a can, you know? And so times can be tough. Things can come up that are unexpected too. And so being financial stewards is probably... One of the most single most important things we can do in the modern age, but so many, so few people understand how to steward money beyond just investing and making a lot of money. So, lots of things to cover, which are going to be pretty cool, and I and I think are going to touch home for a lot of people as well. Yeah, I was hanging out with like eighty millionaire, and and there's some other folks too that you know that we hang out with that are very very wealthy, and uh, some of them are laughably horrible with money and just because they they know how to make a lot but then they spend just as much and they don't have any fundamentals on the flip side i know some very 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 low income you know friends of mine that are doing fantastic they have a house they're willing they're living below their means they're doing a lot of stuff right and they they pretty much have financial independence already even though they're just you know not necessarily minimum wage jobs but a little bit above that and, you know, there's just a couple and that's, you know, it's, it's definitely, definitely do it. It's all about the fundamentals. And so, yeah. Anything else before we get out of here? Are we going to talk about budget? I don't know. You don't have a budget, but I mean, about the budget. Actual, okay. no, I didn't know we were okay to talk about the budget because we yeah. talked about a lot of things, but okay, really, about, for the, do we want to break it into a second episode where it's like <laughs> no. categories are on the budget? No, maybe we can dive into that a little bit. The whole idea truly is budget is accountability at its basic level because it tracks things, all the things that we're talking about today. It can also help you automate, which is nice. So, and again, you can pay for fancy software. There's some really, really great budgeting tools. You can pay like my wife did for someone to design it. So it's all pretty and nice and like pleasant to look at. And it doesn't cause you an immense amount of stress and it auto calculates, auto populates. So many people are good with the science and the math behind these tools, pay them to do it right. Unless you have such a simple way of life that you can do it on pen and paper, which I did for years, and that's when I was doing the best managing my money, weirdly enough, you add another person to that equation, it becomes very difficult. But at the end of the day, whether you go to Etsy like we did and you pay to get a budget or you pay for any 
and there's free ones too, or you subscribe to the Dave Ramsey one, whatever that is. It is a fundamental tool that's not just going to help you and your household. When you go to borrow money, when you go to do things, one, it'll help you that like way price versus cost, which we'll get into on a different episode. But more importantly, when a banker or a lender says, hey, I need to understand your household expenses, your income versus debt ratio, all of those things, a budget's going to make all of that so much simpler for you to understand and for them to see your financial picture. So I will, I will give a plug for that. Yeah. No, and yeah, I apologize for the, to the listeners for trying to cut you off early. Yeah. In my mind, I don't use a budget and the <laughs> budget I, I set up one time, which was do all your auto drafts, whatever's left, have that. Right. Yeah. Which I adopted from you. So I took our budget and then started auto drafting the things within that, that are important. So it's kind of like we have a hybrid system, right? Make it easy on and yourself. It, but and still, it's going, to to, it's going to be subject to change too, because whatever you know, next year we could, could be talking and it's completely different because we a situation has changed or there's a better tool out there now. So, you know, what my budget does look like is I have an emergency fund. I have a non-emergency large purchase. So there's going to be like tires that $50 a month goes into. So that's 25 bucks per paycheck. And the emergency fund, I think it's like a hundred bucks a month. Then I have I used to I used to start small. I think it started at like $10 a month. And then now it's up to $250 a paycheck goes to buy S&P 500 index fund. And basically my quote budget is I have all these accounts. It's, it's Dave Ramsey's envelope method, if you don't know that method. And everything's automatically parsed to the beginning of each, well, the same day the paycheck comes in. And then that goes into those buckets. And then what's left in the spend account goes there. Now you can even get crazier with it and say, this is the grocery account. And we are only going to allocate $700 to the grocery account. And, you know, once we're out, we're done, right? For the month, or, you know, that'll be a tough one. But then you have an entertainment account. Then you have, right? And so where are you getting those categories for them? I would suggest you get them from you having previously just done not a budget and just trash your existing spending, right? So step one, dropping this kind of back up. Step one, have your values. Step two, track your spending. Just if you do nothing else for the rest of your life with money, just track your spending and be aware. Step three, see if that, if your tracking aligns with your values. Step four, write that into the budget, right? For me, a quote budget is all of the accounts that, with the auto drafts. For Dane, his budget is a fancy Etsy profile. For 1990s Mindy Jensen, her budget was writing it down on a piece of paper in the kitchen, right? So that's kind of my progression through it. And, and the only reason I like my version is because, you know, I'm the smartest and the best. No, of course not. But no, it's because <laughs> I don't have to think about it, right? I spent time many moons ago to think about it and I probably check it once a year, right? Am yeah. I hurting? Am I consistently robbing one bucket? Do I consistently have too much money, like in the gas bucket? Well, I drive an electric car now. I don't buy gas. So that do I need to reallocate those funds? So I just kind of like, without thinking and, and budgeting, I mean, I, I truly, I do have a budget. I'm just taking the human element out, the human element out, because I'm very bad at money. Well played. I'm bad at paying attention to things. So, Well, and, and I do want to say before we end, I've heard this many times. I want to make so much money. I don't think about money or I don't think about a budget. And I have yet to meet the person. And I know some insanely wealthy people. Actually, there's only one person that I have ever met that was so incredibly wealthy that one, they didn't know the, the balances in their accounts because they didn't care. There was just too much coming in constantly. And two, that they never had to think about their spending or think about their habits or think about money at all. So, you know, for the everyday person like us, you will have to at some point look at these tools if you want to get serious about your financial future and your present situation. Uh, it's just something I had to eventually just admit that I couldn't do this without some sort of plan, some sort of tracking, some sort of system, because I was one of those people who would have liked to think, oh, I don't want to think about it, because I had high disposable income at one point, 
but it never put me ahead. And eventually it caught up to me where I did need to think about it because it was facing me and it was unavoidable to not think about it. I guess right. is a good way to say it. That's great. That's awesome. Cool. Well, if that's it, then we look forward to seeing you next week. If you guys can leave a review, if you're just hearing about this, it really does help grow the channel. And Dane, where can people ask us questions or find out more about us? I believe that's Hugh Carnahan at HughCarnahan.com, right? No, it's podcast at HughCarnahan.com. Podcast at HughCarnahan.com. So we actually improved from the last episode. But yeah, shoot us comments, emails, topics, things that we can either re-explore or things that you hope that we get into in, in future episodes. A broad subject, but we want to deliver that value in every episode. We, we read every comment and we try to respond as best we can. And a lot of the questions will make its way to the podcast and we'll, we'll talk about them. If we don't know the answer, we're going to find an expert who does know the answer. And so we're super excited. And yeah, anything else for the listeners, Dane? You know, again, just your participation means a lot to us. On top of that, we really care about the community and people's financial literacy. There's a lot we still need to learn. So we're excited to see where the journey goes. But thank you for tuning in. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.